And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a couple of newcomers to the temple, creators of the upcoming role-playing social relationship system, better known as RS Squared. We have Marco Tradello and Massimo Nespoli. Hopefully I got both of your names right. Yeah, incredibly correct. Yeah. Yeah. How, are you, how are you doing today? Well, fine, uh, given the situation. Yeah. Um, so, it's a bit of a tradition around here to open with the humble beginnings, in a sense. With that in mind, walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games, effectively, and... What was it that made it stick for you? Hmm. Well, you want to well, go first? first is, uh, yeah. We are here in the role playing thanks to Massimo, so mm -hmm. you have to, to start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first experience in role playing games was as for 90%, I believe, uh, with uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, despite the fact that uh, I owned the vast majority of the manuals we had, uh, it was uh, Marco who actually mastered our first campaign, our first successful campaign <laughs> in a setting that uh, he created. Then we moved to other role playing games like uh, Vampire the Masquerade uh, or uh, other games of the World of Darkness. Mm -hmm. I also continued. To I mean, both of us continued on uh, live-action role-playing games, uh, but uh, we quit them because it was not exactly the kind of uh, entertainment we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Then we continued on separate ways on this, uh, because I stick on the more traditional part of the role-playing game, so I'm more of the uh, rule enthusiast uh, part of the game. He's more on the social aspect uh, or the more... The more uh, how may I say the more, yeah, the more social, the more talkative part of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this spanning in around uh, 15 years or now, mm -hmm. around that time. Yeah, more, like, uh, more, more, more. We started when we were uh, 15. I was 15, Massimo 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Oh, shit, they're quite 20 14, years. 15, or, six, or 15, 16, but uh, that's the time. And yeah, um, Massimo is uh, the, the expert uh, of the system, of the uh, of, uh, rules, and uh, I always worked um, much more uh, on the uh, on the social aspect of the of the game. That's why we are here. And uh, yeah, we are not uh, um, great <laughs> in running a, a long campaign mm -hmm. because we are. Uh, very good uh, in creating uh, house rules and we love too much to test our house rules and uh, yeah our campaigns uh, always uh, suffer and, uh, <laughs> from the short duration for uh, new house rules came uh, came along so we had to restart over again to say how would have been if we started over with this new rule or this different <laughs> aspect or <laughs> yeah and after uh, like 10, uh, 12 house rule, uh, we, uh, we were playing a totally different system. <laughs> and you have to imagine things like, uh, okay, we are playing D&D, but uh, we don't like uh, this class, so erase it. And uh, we don't like uh, all the abilities, so uh, erase them and use another system. <laughs> And uh, after uh, some time, uh, simply DND was not uh, our system. <laughs> so, so we simply started to create uh, our, uh, our house rules. And uh, in the time we tried to, to give them a, a better form. And uh, now we. We, we feel we can uh, create a real product, and uh, there we are, <laughs> and there we are. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the story to Sparth. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to the when it comes to the house ruling things, I will I will counter with um, one, with one little thing. Um, Gygax house ruled his own game. Yeah, and, quite a lot. And second, I'm sure you two are familiar with the concept of rule zero. Oh shit! Uh, it doesn't matter the rules; it matters the fans or something like that. Uh, is it right? Close. Um, uh, no, I'm not. I'm familiar for. I've uh, heard of it, but uh, never was, never read it directly. Um, the best. Now, there's there's different um, variations of how rule of how rule. Rule zero is written, but this is the one that I pre that I prefer using. RPGs are entertainment. Your goal as a group to make is to make your games as entertaining as possible. If that means breaking the rules temporarily or permanently as a house rule, then so be it. Yeah, that's quite uh, quite describe what we did quite well, <laughs> quite accurately. Um, although the although the um. Although Munchkin had a funnier version, of, funnier version of Rule Zero that just said, "Argue over all the rules." But then it's Munchkin, and um, you're not supposed to take anything in Munchkin seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, that... it's interesting that you, it's interesting that there's a bit that there's a bit of a leading towards the social relationship. Uh, motif, especially with how RS um, squared is is intended. So, with that with that in mind, where did the where did the push for putting in the social aspects really start? The social aspect, uh, yeah, like uh, when like, born, uh, like in, you... that, in that uh, long campaign, <laughs> we. We played because um, I put yeah an house rule to to handle uh, the social relationship of the group of mm -hmm. the group of the players with all the other uh, well the other uh, NPC and um, factions. So every every quest, uh, every everything we. They, they <laughs> uh, I was the, the game master, so they, <laughs> they, they've done have uh, consequences, have uh, consequences all over the city. They were playing in a huge city, mm -hmm. and uh, there, uh, there were uh, different factions, and that is how I can uh, take track of of the actions and uh, the consequences. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you ever played uh, GTA 2? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You remind that there were uh, different factions mm -hmm. of uh, of criminals, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you attack one faction, the other faction uh, um, give you more respect, uh, give you more attention. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I tried to to create something similar at the time to to create a story in the story. So there were uh, the main quest line, and uh, the the quest line uh, the group uh, creates uh, with the uh, with the actions. Mm -hmm. So if they attack, uh, not because uh, I say that or i put an npc to us uh, that have asked them to do that but because they choose to mm -hmm. there were consequences so a faction uh, likes them more or less depending depending on what the, what they've done uh, if the if uh, they accept a mission and uh, uh, that mission fails what consequences mm -hmm. so there were uh, numbers numbers who, uh, who said if uh, all was uh, good or bad for them and that numbers those numbers mm -hmm. also describes uh, uh, the behavior 
of defection with them. So uh, good numbers, good uh, behavior. The numbers, uh, you know, new, new new playing charter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, because, <laughs> because defection uh, do not like them, so uh, uh, can actively hunt, hunt for them. So they, they have uh, always to to keep in mind uh, that there is a social aspect and not just uh, the actions because. Uh, in many campaigns, uh, the social aspect uh, is not present. Uh, they can uh, run around uh, making damages, uh, um, revealing secrets, uh, and really nothing happens. If they, um, if they the master, the dungeon master in D and D, don't uh, don't remind it or uh, don't uh, active uh, pulse of death, uh, the path. So the system that uh, I created at the time uh, was uh, really the, the first step to, to RS2 for us, <laughs> because we say RS2 for simplicity, but RS squared. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the time we, we, we make it better and now I hope uh, really better. <laughs> now, so, it's funny so, that it's, it's funny, funny that, that you mentioned, you mentioned Vampire, the Masquerade Vampire the Masquerade because that is a game that is well known for having a strong sense of factioning through both that and through the vast majority of the World of Darkness line and the um, adjacent lines within the storyteller system. Would mm -hmm. you say that was a major influence in the early structuring of RS Squared? Well, we took inspiration from various sources. If I should find a, a source that more than other uh, helped us in creating the system, I would look at the more recent part of the role-playing games, uh, right, like the play by the Apocalypse uh, or Fate, uh, as these are games, uh, these new wave games, uh, really take care of how the players uh, interact with the narrative world while uh, games like uh, Vampire the Masquerade or Dungeons and Dragons so were more concerned on uh, how the players interact with the physical part of the uh, of the world so there were consequences uh, that were uh, how may I explain that were real for how the physics of the world would react uh, but not for how the emotional or the narrative part of the story would react uh, we were interested into bringing these two worlds close uh, as now we want to we wanted to create a system where there were realistic and long-term consequences both good and bad for the choose uh, the choices of the player characters uh, as uh, marco said for uh, NPCs and factions interactions, but we also wanted to have a narrative bring of it. As you said, the Vampire the Masquerade has a strong feeling of uh, factions, but strictly speaking in the narrative part, not in the real rule system. We wanted to take the idea of Vampire the Masquerade and all the factions and all the, the conflicts inside the factions and bring a rule system so that the players uh, that uh, play these kind of games, they have uh, a visible, a numerical um, aspect that, that can help, uh, help them to interact with it in a more precise and clear way, if uh, I can explain myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Vampire the Masquerade was a great influence regarding the fact that uh, the social aspect uh, and the social conflicts are part of the role-playing games, uh, but we looked uh, to the more uh, recent aspects of the hobby for... Uh, uh, inspiring us for the mechanical part. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, uh, we played uh, Vampire uh, in live for uh, nearly two years. So, mm -hmm. you know, as live, Vampire is uh, all relationships. Yeah. Yeah, totally relationship because uh, there are no real um, dice throwing or more uh, when you are in live. Really little. In live, uh, we always played uh, the social aspect, uh, mm -hmm. uh, bringing the um, all the other part, uh, all the all the real real rule 
part uh, for the down times for the for, for the time where we are not in life and that is also a great uh, inspiration because uh, uh, why to lose all the social part uh, when we are not playing where uh, when we are uh, in a um, how to say it uh, in a normal situation you know when um, when in a campaign the players are uh, in a normal place exploring uh, a new city why not uh, to to enjoy the social aspect from the simple thing like uh, hey look at the girl i like i like her mm -hmm. yeah why not to uh, to bring uh, some um, why not to, uh, to make it deeper, to create the, um, the possibility mm -hmm. to, uh, to have, um, to, to make it uh, alive. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to explain it better. <laughs> and uh, and not only on this, or uh, whatever. Uh, like uh, if the the game master uh, is a good actor, for example, and like to uh, to give to give life to NPCs, why not uh, to create affection to a particular NPC? Uh, he can uh, also merchant. Mm -hmm. Why not to talk to him to to help him in various ways and be helped by him in various ways? It um, it always needs something to take track of this because uh, uh, otherwise is uh, like um, air yeah, is like air and we and we rely only on uh, the master memory or uh, that the master take uh, notice uh, of what happened and uh, no uh, we need uh, we need the system. To, to take track of this uh, and to create stories and to create uh, ventures also based uh, on the uh, on this thing mm -hmm. really uh, also we uh, we are uh, creating a little generator to to start uh, uh, special um, special adventures based on social events mm -hmm. okay so there is an event the the group uh, choose how to to react that creates uh, the first uh, social uh, interactions and the interaction creates uh, fr uh, friends and enemies and that is the beginning and the master have just to follow to, to let uh, the things uh, flow mm -hmm. Yes, this was also done to encourage uh, that uh, social aspects of uh, the world and, uh, um, and the player characters helps to create adventures, not just uh, uh, go in the forest and kill the bandits so I can give you monies uh, or uh, go to the chapel of the venture and kill them all. No, not venture tremor and kill them all uh, so we can uh, recover the artifact. We, wa we also wanted that uh, the player characters are moved by... Um, friends, enemies, allies that I have that they've made and that uh, require some favors to them. So it was just made to create, um, mm, as Marco said, a more regalistic approach uh, to the to the social aspect. As, uh, as we also noted that many times uh, an entire session of game could be a relation um, how may I say, a dialogue between the player and the game master regarding uh, a dialogue with, with the PC or with the, uh, the chief of a faction. And as Mark said, that was uh, in the main part of the game, so just uh, an improvising dialogue. I say this, uh, so the DM can reply, so I say that. And for the next uh, for, the, for the next game, maybe I forgot what I said, the DMs forgot what the NPC said, and so we had to come up again with uh, how the relation with that specific NPC or faction had remained. With this system, we wanted to create a sense of long-lasting uh, uh, social aspect between the player characters and the world where they live in. Mm -hmm. 
when now um given given the background that you guys have ha that you guys have had um in the early version of RS squared mm -hmm. what was it was it built with a with a certain with a um, certain system in mind or did you guys always intend for it to be this system agnostic plug and play approach no, the plug-and-play approach arrived much, much later when we decided that we want to create a product for uh, uh, that was usable for to the most uh, to the greatest number of groups. Uh, initially, it was done primarily on the 3.5 campaign of Dungeons and Dragons. We played yeah, yeah. 3.5. So no, it was not meant to be system agnostic at first. Uh, it became later when we saw that uh, this kind of uh, mechanic could benefit uh, more games than just Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, making it system agnostic would help uh, would have helped us make it uh, more uh, rule light. So it would have helped in implementing it in more systems and not becoming a burden for a master or a player that had already studied the base system. All right, that which that makes sense. Um, now, with that, with with that kind of thing, with that kind of thing in mind, um, mm -hmm. given given how a given how a campaign can easily um, bloom into into having into having many moving parts, do you have plans within the book to have some to have some sort of sheet to allow it, that to be easily tracked by the uh, DM? Well, we won't, we don't want to disclose too much about how the system works <laughs> as to avoid too many spoilers. Mm -hmm. But yes, we also are taking into account that this was, uh, this came up a bit later in the project, but this was something where we are very interested to work on for the final product, mm -hmm. to create all the net of uh, relationship that uh, the player characters can have with factions and their PC, and also uh, how the various, the various NPC and factions have relationships between them. So if I have a good relationship with uh, a knightly older and he has a good relationship uh, with, a thief, uh, with a guild of thieves, uh, then uh, how the knight orders and the guild of thieves uh, have a relationship between them now that they may know that members of them have relationships between them because we are part of the same game group, uh, well, adventure group uh, for the sake of narrative. Uh, so yeah, it's something we want to take in account. We want to create something that allows the, the, both the dungeon master and the player characters to keep track of it and see real effects on the game world, but as I said, principally on the narrative part of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why the, the system will, um, will be used both uh, by the GM and the players mm -hmm. yep. with, the, um, with the same sheet, but uh, in a different, in a bit uh, different way. Yeah. Given that the sheet is going to be used by by the GM and the and the players, is there going to be a means so that the um, so that the G so that the GM isn't looking at, is look that the uh, players aren't looking at the GM's notes when it comes to that. Well, it depends. Uh, if uh, the relationship is uh, declared, so if I know that uh, that NPC hate me, well, that can be public. Uh, GM side, uh, the GM can uh, keep the uh, the secret relationships uh, secret for uh, for the player characters and uh, their players. We are taking into account of both of the both of the approaches, as we know that many groups prefer to let the players know what maybe their characters don't know. If the player is able to pull up this relationship in an interesting and realistic way, so it will be much a, a choice of uh, the dungeon of the game master to keep it secret or keep it public, or to mix uh, mix match the two things uh, for. Uh, single relationship or for all of them. Mm -hmm. Also, remind uh, that uh, it can be not immediate. So, um, I, made an I make an example. If uh, my character um, tried, uh, tried bad uh, an NPC, but nothing to, to extreme, 
the GM can uh, take uh, take note of it. Mm-hmm. If uh, I go on making making these, he uh, can um, the the bad relationship can grow and grow and grow until it make uh, real consequences of the uh, in the game. So depends depends on the, on what uh, on what what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many times depends if i say to a I don't know to, to to a waiter hey hey come here and uh, clean the table it's uh, it's your job <laughs> it is not uh, something terrible but uh, the that waiter can remind me in a, in a bad way and that is uh, a beginning of uh, a social relationship. Then, if uh, if I go back to the same tavern and do that again and again and again, maybe, maybe, <laughs> it, uh, the, the waiter can uh, put venom on my beer. For example, uh, he can uh, not serve me uh, or call the guards uh, to to make trouble. You know. Mm-hmm. So depends, but how to take care of uh, a similar relationship in an easy way? That's why that's where uh, R squared ca- came into. Yeah. All right. Now, when it comes to the when it comes to the size of the of the book, um, what are you guys shooting for as far as a as far as a page count with R S squared? Oh, we. Uh, what about we calculated? Yeah, we're working on it because uh, the format uh, will be five inch uh, per eight inch, mm-hmm. and uh, we are working, uh, you know, on the graphic format. Uh, depends. We we calculated about fifty, but uh, it can be more, much more. Depends. We are uh, we are creating it. I don't think we're less than 50. Yeah. With all the recent additions, much more close to 100. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seeing yes. how deep we want to go with some aspects of the relationship part. Yeah. And uh, we want to, uh, to take it simple. So it's not, a, you know, a, a, a huge book because uh, it must be fast to implement, really mm-hmm. fast. So there were, uh, there is uh, an, in, uh, an introduction mm-hmm. with the rules, and then all uh, of the other uh, part of the book is uh, additions, uh, explanations, uh, deepenings, uh, examples, generators. So the rules uh, uh, will be really simple, like uh, I don't think uh, more than uh, 15, 20 pages. Yeah, likely. Yeah. And all the rest will be all the needed to use it uh, in, in different ways. Yeah, with explanation, uh, depending uh, on the on every possible uh, relationship uh, and this kind of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we uh, this product, we were also interested into helping and giving uh, hints or advices or. Uh, yeah, this uh, two uh, two game master who have to come up with a relationship on the on the ground and uh, might find themselves uh, uh, not at ease with uh, having to think this on their feet, uh, having a a guide or uh, at least a hint on how to handle this specific relationship situation might help them to create uh, to feel more secure and uh, give the the game a more smooth uh, progress. Which I I can definitely get I can definitely get behind that, um, and what um. Now, given the given the fact that you guys had you had mentioned that in, initially this was using um this was rooted in three point five D and D, but you guys expanded it to be system agnostic. Mm-hmm. Would it be 
Would it be fair to say that one of the goals you also have as well is for it to be setting agnostic, i.e. to to, sh to demonstrate that you can use this for setups other than high fantasy? Yeah, it's absolutely a uh, setting agnostic. It was a setting agnostic before being system agnostic. We usually use uh, fan high fantasy or fantasy examples because it's uh, we where we played the most. So. Mm -hmm. It's where we are more comfortable when we have to think uh, for an example on our feats, but it's absolutely a uh, setting agnostic. You can use it in like fantasy, uh, modern fantasy, or uh, sci-fi, modern adventure, wherever the, of course, wherever the relationship part is important. If you are playing uh, a game of uh, going to the dungeon, slay the monster, take the treasure, and don't do anything else, well, yeah, there is no the room for relationship uh, It's not the uh, it's uh, it's natural uh, home uh, as I can say, mm -hmm. but uh, it's totally not dependent uh, on a setting. Mm -hmm. It's totally for uh, for whatever when the, we we want to to have relationships between PC and PC and. Uh, whatever <laughs> whatever can talk or think is okay mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. <laughs> nah. and when it comes now when, when it comes, comes to, to the examples that you guys are gonna be you guys are gonna be putting in um are those is that going to demonstrate what how it would approach with um small scale, i.e. a um a relatively smaller amount of moving parts when it comes to factions and characters, and a more large scale, like if somebody's doing, if somebody wants to use this for a one shot or for a long term campaign. Well, yeah, the examples will take, uh, as you say, will take care of both uh, small scale and greater scale uh, relationships uh, for both. Uh, uh, small term and long ter short term and uh, long term relationships uh, mm -hmm. we will include the real rules to use it in media rest with the idea that as you said you want to play a one shot so maybe uh, player characters already had some uh, relationship uh, progress at the the adventure so we'll include rules to create characters that already have relationships uh, rooted into the setting so yeah we'll also include uh, uh, rules to use it uh, in a in a very quick way not having to create an entire story of relationships uh, that spans for around uh, 100 playing sessions mm -hmm. yeah we also are creating a, uh, uh, another little generator mm -hmm. to um, to put um, previous relationship uh, in the background part. Yeah. So, uh, um, so, uh, so the player can start in a campaign much more focused because uh, the, the DM can uh, use the generator with the, um, with the player to mm -hmm. insert him much in, in a much more realistic way. In the, in the campaign from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, obvious, obvious, obviously, this is something that's been accelerated due to the current sit due to current events. But there has been a growing trend of sh of shifting towards virtual tabletop in a lot of circles. Um, in some cases, for conveniences because time zones suck, and in other cases, <laughs> um, for Again, current event reasons, mm -hmm. but yep. do you see? Do you see the? Do you see RS squared as something that can work just as well in um, a virtual tabletop setup, just as much as it does in a fit in a physical one? We didn't test uh, uh, RS squared in a virtual uh, uh, in a virtual setting. That's uh, something we have to we have to still do. But absolutely, as uh, as we thought of it. Uh, it might even uh, be better in uh, in a virtual in a virtual setting as the moving part can be more easily uh, changed or shifted to accommodate uh, the changing in the situation or the relationship status with the various factions and NPCs. But uh, it uh, it was initially thing to have a 
a rooted part in uh, having all the moving parts on the tables ready to move to be changed on the spot so yeah both on uh, virtual tabletop and uh, uh, real uh, real life tabletop uh, it won't be much different for us or for how we put the system to implement it mm -hmm. also thing really important you know uh, players are used to to think and uh, often overthink <laughs> on the um, on the numbers, on the on the characteristics, on the build, we can uh, with R squared add uh, a new variable, the social aspect, so they can uh, put their mind also in. Uh, okay, the next time I play, I have to talk with this NPC because I need him to make a thing. I need. A favor for, from him. Also, I have to uh, to talk or do something for this other NPC because uh, he asked me the last time, and if I uh, don't do that, for sure it will he will not be happy, <laughs> and uh, that uh, that will uh, that, uh, that will uh, give me a problem next uh, in the next uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. So. We, we add the the social planning, um, a real social planning part, uh, important for the game. And the, um, the great thing is that uh, the GM just have to check the the social uh, the, the social net. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not uh, a complication. To the campaign just uh, it is just needed to take track when things happens yeah, yeah. now yeah. when it when it comes to when it comes to that when it comes to the web the um for lack of a better term web within the within the social setup um mm -hmm. is that something that can be applicable to both faction to both factions and individuals or is it is it a case where factions and individuals um their relationships would operate under different approaches no both the relationships operate under the same system we uh to, we took in account that many kind of many there are kind of games that might be more interested into presenting the the player characters that interacted with just a small pool of NPCs that are important for their stories. So maybe the faction will won't be to, uh, we won't, we won't be taken in account. On the other side, maybe you want to uh, to play this uh, gargantuan game uh, where the the player characters are movers of the setting, so they always interact with uh, player with uh, NPCs that are real are really just uh, parts of the factions. So they really interact with the factions, but uh, both the system can operate in the same way. So you can uh, interact with an NPC, see how your relationship with that NPC interact with uh, your relationship with a faction, how that NPC interact with a relationship with a faction. But uh, yeah, both, uh, both the world can be uh, mix matched without any kind of, uh, of change to the system. And yes, it, would think it was uh, thought to be uh, interchangeable or to mix it together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's a. Uh, it's totally mm -hmm. the same system with the same uh, kind of rules. The difference is uh, the, the reference, uh, the, the referent. <laughs> you know, if uh, if my character is really important in the story, it can, you, uh, it works uh, like a company. You know. Uh, if I am the king, and uh, I have to talk uh, to, um, to to another king, my relationship uh, is with that king, yeah, but also with the ring. Okay, so the the GM can use the ring as a, a a virtual NPC, okay, as a faction, as a whatever he, he needs to. If uh, my character is really well known, 
in, in a place, you can use the place also as a faction. Mm -hmm. Okay, a, a city. If uh, I have families in a city, all the city in his uh, in its uh, complex can react to me in a, in a, in, a, in a peculiar way. Also, obviously, there are single NPC NPCs who work toward me, with me, for me. So there are different levels. Yeah, the, the real scope of uh, the various interactions is determined primarily by the kind of story the, the group wants to tell, if it's a more intimate or a more political uh, uh, kind of story. So um, it's, uh, it's more uh, something that the group will decide with their game master what a relationship will be in their, uh, in their campaign and in their sessions, it will, if it will be with NPCs, with NPCs and factions, with uh, only factions, and as Marco said, what a faction is. Uh, a small group, uh, uh, an, entire, uh, an entire city, a government, uh, an entire planet if you are playing Star Wars. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, the scope uh, is, uh, is something that we took account of, but we also recognize that uh, is something that uh, is uh, more... Uh, it's more an issue that has to be taken in account by the game master and the group as regarding the uh, the kind of game they want to play. Yeah. Now, now I'm guessing I'm guessing that throughout all of this, you guys have made you guys have made an extra effort to make sure that whenever whenever relationships are are written out, it's never it's never put it's never put out in numerical form. Like there is no there is no loyalty get loyalty or disloyalty gauge or anything like that it's more of a description of um the relationships we took in account both of them uh, really we used a uh, numerical uh, uh, we use only the numerical part when we played it uh, with uh, marco initially mm -hmm. now we want to we have uh, created a mix of the things as uh, the numerical part uh, helps uh, to have uh, an idea of a specific, uh, uh, if uh, my relationship is, uh, I'm not saying that it's this, it's just for example, if my relationship is one and I know the maximum is 10, I know that, okay, is this far from being an intimate relationship? But yeah, we also use the uh, names and descriptions as it will help, as you said, the narrative part as uh, saying, uh, yeah, I have a relationship of one with the waiter is not the same as saying I'm friend with the waiter. So yeah, the, descript the description comes more to the narrative part of the game. The numerical part is more to remember, okay, we are at this level with this uh, NPC, with this faction. We want to arrive to this. Okay, we have uh, an idea of the distance. And not only, uh, also the idea of the path to reach that point. Mm -hmm. So, what I have to do to, uh, to become a, a real friend, a real, uh, really intimate, or uh, to, to have a, a real favor, or uh, to, to make that NPC help, uh, help me for real, or um, advising me of, uh, of a danger. Why I have uh, to to just uh, leave uh, the story or or create the story? Because if I talk with the NPC and create a position in, in a place, that place reacts to me. So the numbers comes uh, to to check to to, <laughs> to immediately check. Um, uh, how the, the relationship is uh, yeah, is going, mm -hmm. but there were also the, the, there is also the um, the description of the relationship and all in, uh, on the same sheet. So really easy to read, really immediate to read, really fast to read, and uh, on two levels. So. Uh, there is the the group relationships 
and uh, charter relationships. That, def that definitely makes sense. And um, when it comes to group and character relationships, would those be tracked separately so as to not avoid making the whole thing into one gi into one giant um, tumbleweed? Mm, well, specifically speaking, uh, yes and no. <laughs> as uh, the group is created by, uh, of course, by the individual characters uh, and how the individual characters interact with a specific relationship might or might not uh, be the same. Uh, the, the more generic approach that you mentioned is uh, more, uh, more likely made when the, the NPCs has, have a relationship with a specific uh, with the with the group and not a specific part of the playing characters. Uh, we might say that uh, as uh, quite all of the role playing games, I have uh, a social aspect between the various characters, uh, mm -hmm. the various uh, uh, playing characters. Uh, initially, the great majority of relationships will be between the group and a specific NPC or a specific faction. As the relationships go, grow more closer. Uh, one character or one player might get more fond to specific NPC and develop a specific and more intimate relationship or maintain a generic relationship that will uh, advance or decrease uh, as the group does or does nothing uh, towards that specific NPC. Also, we, uh, we, we want to remember that uh, a relationship that is not uh, taken, uh, taken in account uh, will uh, sooner or later degrade and die that not to mean uh, now the waiter hate you but simply that there is no more relationship not bad and not good mm -hmm. so we also want to feel that the to capture the feel that our relationship is a living thing that must be taken in account if you don't do nothing towards that relationship it will simply end and you'll have to rebuild it which might be a good or a bad thing but uh, you as a player character are free to choose uh, if you want to have specific relationships with a specific uh, um, non-player character or mm -hmm. a specific faction or just follow the group and uh, leave of the reflection of their relationships uh, that, uh, that they create on the, on the rest of the world, which of course won't be this, on the same level. Uh, at least just to uh, encourage the various, the various players to create uh, their own relationships with the gaming world that they explore in, uh, in the game. Yeah, because uh, it's not uh, obviously mandatory to create uh, a, a huge social net. Depends if a player likes to, to cultivate it or not. Mm -hmm. Depends. Depends uh, if uh, a player is uh, there to, to slay goblins, <laughs> okay, <laughs> to, to just enjoy the ride, as uh, Massimo was saying, or to create uh, a living in a social net. Uh, that is totally different. It's not mandatory. So, as in real life, there are many people who simply accept what uh, what happens. Okay, I have those relationship and it's okay. Um, that's what, uh, what uh, the universe gave me, <laughs> okay? Or uh, they put real effort on uh, create uh, their, their uh, social relationship, the, on the people. Uh, um, there are many people who, who put uh, Real, uh, very much time on the, on the uh, on their relationship, so it's the same. Depends. Uh, the, it is another part of that of uh, the charter sheet. So depends if uh, one wants uh, to to make it better or not. And uh, I said it's not mandatory. All right, I got you. So. Now I, I know that I know that you guys are in the um, are in the are in the final hours regarding RS squared, yeah. but presuming that presuming that everything goes as as as, pl as planned, um, so in in the interest of not jinxing, 
Okay. Um, mm -hmm. What would you be shooting for as far as a release window? And I do realize that everything is in flux, so so when it comes to that, I'm taking it with with the requisite grain of salt. Okay, on this I leave the reply to Marco. That is the, the editorial part is uh, on his own. Okay, it's simple. All uh, as uh, as everyone can see, all the the graphic part uh, is uh, already done. Uh, we have the final idea. The final uh, uh, it is done. We are working on writing uh, all all of the parts. But of, of, of the parts, what we are now <laughs> confronting is the the printing part, because uh, every every website we can use has uh, different rules, different kind of um, <laughs> of uploading of uh, of everything. Okay, so for example. Drive through RPC, RP, RPG. Mm -hmm. Simple. Give me different rules to follow than uh, Amazon, for example. And there are other uh, distributors we are uh, checking. So we we are choosing what give us uh, the best uh, decentralized uh, printing. Uh, for the first, so fast, <laughs> fast to deliver because we don't want uh, people to wait a month from the start to the end of the shipping. The best quality, obviously, because uh, the, there are details we have to count, uh, like um, kind uh, <laughs> of the finishing of the cover, kind of paper. Um, because we want uh, not uh, white paper, but uh, printed paper with our graphics. So we have to uh, to check uh, also that we uh, we have to, to make a try. Mm -hmm. So the first thing when uh, we, we will end to when we will finish to to write uh, will be the proof copy. Obviously, we will show the proof uh, the proof copy as soon as possible when uh, when done. And uh, probably we, we will test all the three systems we we are thinking, and that's it. Uh, we are going this way because uh, it is really simple to deliver uh, the product. The, they take care of the shipping. They take care uh, of all. So we are uh, really really helped by this. <laughs> For the digital download, for sure, will be on drive through RPG. Mm -hmm. So easy, <laughs> really easy. And for the for the physical copies, uh, we will, we are testing. It is probable that we that there are physical copy on different markets. Uh, all right. Um, so uh, you know. Okay. So if uh, one uh, prefer Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, he can order uh, on, uh, on Amazon mm -hmm. or uh, on drive through or other uh, <laughs> other different uh, distribution. One uh, is quite a surprise because I'm studying it now and uh, checking. All right, I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. And. I'll definitely be I'll keeping definitely a close eye on its, uh, its development. Uh, development, and, development. and, and I'll be looking forward to, see, forward to seeing to how, it, how, it, how, it turns, how it turns out and how, out and how um, um, interesting, interesting, interesting things things, things, things end up get things end up get getting once it's released into the wild. Uh, mm, no, I don't think there is. Nothing to add. Uh, I think we if said we said, uh, <laughs> we said everything. <laughs> I, I can't come up with other people with other details and without uh, uh, falling into spoilers, which uh, we want to avoid uh, yeah, as fast as possible. 
Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Also, this, sorry, this is because uh, we are talking in English, so we have to think if uh, it is Italian, we can talk all the night <laughs> <laughs> about this. No problem. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but with no, all, there are no... With all, with all, but with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank both of you for taking the time out of your schedule to come on to the show. And, of course, anytime you guys see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. We'll keep that in mind for the next time. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And thank you for contacting us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks mm -hmm. to you for the opportunity. My pleasure. And My pleasure. Just, uh, uh, yes, one last, last thing. <laughs> we will deliver, as said, a surprise for all the backers. Mm -hmm. uh, another product to... Ooh, no, it can say it's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, well, if you actually well, say it, then it doesn't count as a surprise. Does yeah, it? yeah, you know, but I don't want to say too much. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a real simple product uh, to to start uh, to know us. So it is a, 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 a how can I say it a, a little uh, not a system now it will be <laughs> a system. Let's say it to, uh, it's a little add-on for uh, all of your player characters and non-player characters. Uh, uh something little that is always needed but uh mostly overlooked just like Aaron really square but more small really really more small you know um R square is this big <laughs> dd is this big <laughs> really simple uh, thing but uh we think uh, that they, they can and you also can enjoy it uh, in the next days. All right, I'll be keep I'll be I'll keeping be keep an eye out for that. Eye out for that. Okay. J just finishing the the graphic part. <laughs> so. And of course, and of, course. and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. Mm -hmm. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!